Essential oils, scientifically documented, to carry the highest level of oxygenating molecules of any substance known to man. Essential oils contain minerals. Essential oils are a catalyst because they're made up of oxygen, amino acids, and their function is to carry nutrients into the cells of the human body. How many of you in this room today would love to have better brain power, better memory retention, Absolutely. Essential oils have the ability to digest chemicals in the human body. Essential oils have the ability to stimulate the secretagogues for producing human growth hormone and antibodies for thyroid support. Essential oils have the ability to stimulate enzymatic activity in the human body for better digestive function. That's why I say and will continue to say essential oils are the missing link of modern medicine. Learn what it's like to feel alive and to have the spirit of energy and clarity of mind and the ability to go and do and give life to others. We can only do it through being an example. You are about to listen to what may be the most life-changing health information you have ever heard. You will learn why plant substances, known as essential oils, are the missing link in our search for vibrant health and longevity. This ancient science, with its biblical foundation, reveals why frankincense and myrrh were brought to the Christ child, and why for centuries essential oils have helped with countless medical conditions. Dr. Don Gary Young was the first to conduct clinical research in North America over 18 years ago on the use of essential oils for the treatment of degenerative disease. With the largest privately owned herb farm in the world for the production of essential oils, Dr. Young is one of only a few experts who understands the vast requirements for organic growing, distilling, and protecting the quality of these precious oils. For those who are looking for new truth with healing of different dimensions, this may be your answer. Let's join Dr. Young now in one of his most fascinating lectures. Essential oils, just to give you a real simple analogy, if we were to take the oil from the plant or just take the plant and the human body and put them side by side, we could do some very interesting comparisons. You see, in the human body, we have a substance called blood, and that blood has a very specific purpose. That purpose is to transport nutrients to the cells, to nurture and feed the cells. One of the primary agents in that blood that is responsible for the delivery of the nutrients through the cell wall is called oxygen. If we take the oxygen out of the blood, what happens? We would die very quickly. The cells begin to mutate and give off a toxic gas that creates a host for disease. And today we live in an environment where we are deprived of oxygen because of the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the water that we drink. And because of that, we have set ourselves up to be victims and it's quite obvious what's going on in our world today. Well, when we look at essential oils, they have the same role and play the same function in the plant as the blood does in the human body. How many of you have cut your finger? And what happens? You bleed. Why do you bleed? Exactly, to cleanse and to kill the bacteria because you have to do that to start the regeneration process of the tissue. Okay, how many of you ladies have seen a leaf on one of your houseplants torn or damaged? And what comes out? It's a liquid, isn't it? It's called the resin by some. Some call it the blood of the plant. Some call it the life force of the plant, but it's the same thing. It bleeds. It bleeds to cleanse that part where the plant is damaged, to kill the bacteria. You see, the essential oil is like the blood. It's a transporter. And the primary ingredient inside that oil is called oxygen. It has been discovered and determined now through research and the translation of papyrus and hieroglyphics in Egypt that oils were the first medicine of man. Even before herbs were used, oils were extracted from the plant and used before the actual plant was used. And as of three years ago, it was documented that essential oils produce the highest level of oxygenating molecules of any substance known to man. So when we think about that, that we can get actual oxygen from the oil, it's quite exciting. Now, not only can we get oxygen from the oil, but we also get negative ions and we get ozone. Are they important to us? Why? Can bacteria live in ozone? Can bacteria live in a negative ion environment? No. 
You know, it's interesting when you look at what's going on in our world because there's a big wave that has hit the United States called antioxidants, right? And everybody's looking for antioxidants and antimicrobial substance to take. We're just going to walk through some things real quickly and show you why essential oils are the missing link in our health field today and why everyone and every home needs to have them. Let's look at what the human body is up against today. And we look at what's causing the poisons that we're inhaling, the industrial contamination that's affecting our air. Look at the foods that we're eating today, fried foods in grease that causes carcinogenic activity in the blood, foods that are devaluated, and therefore we get no enzymes from the foods that we're eating. And the foods that were coming from the fields are sprayed with chemicals. The ground is saturated with chemicals and has been for over 50 years. And we wonder why we can't get good, wholesome food today. Not to talk about the environmental contamination that's going into the aquifer, along with all of the contamination in the entire chain that the human body is subject to. We absorb this not only through the food and the water, but through the pores of our skin and the oxygen that we breathe into our lungs. These chemicals go down into the intestinal tract and they cause a weakening of the membrane wall and they leach through into the liver and cause cell mutation. It changes the pH chemistry of the blood and all of a sudden we've got a problem. We start creating a host for disease and then we wonder how can this possibly happen? So detoxification is extremely important today in our lives. It's really interesting to know that essential oils, because of their structure, literally will push chemicals, metallics, out of the cells. How do they do it? Because they have the highest level of oxygenating activity of any substance known to man. And oxygen pushes toxins out and pulls potassium back into the cell. Essential oils will reestablish normal cell function and balance. This is Time Magazine. It was a September 12th issue, and I'm sure most of you have seen it. New virus and drug-resistant bacteria reversing human victories over infectious diseases. How can this happen if we have a healthy body? Can we have infection if we're healthy? Can we have cancer if we're healthy? Can we have AIDS if we're healthy? No, of course not. So let's be realistic and look at it. This was quite interesting here because if we look down here at the bottom, it says more than 850 people have come down with cholera in southern Russia and officials fear the disease could erupt into an epidemic. While this article was being published and they were talking about 850 people in Russia, they never even made mention of the thousands of people they were digging holes, open pits, and burying in mass graves in South America from cholera. Did anyone see that on CNN? We need to start paying attention and waking up to what's really going on around us. Look at this. Some microbes can reproduce in just 20 minutes. And this article goes on to talk about how the drug makers are fighting back and yet how that every time they produce a drug, the bacteria or the virus mutates and develops its own immunity to the antibiotic. Now that's quite interesting because when you know these things are fact and then when you come to understand oils and realize that at this point in time today, they have not found one virus that can create an immunity against an essential oil. Look at here. The question ceases to be, when will disease be gone? This is interesting when we look at the statistics here. Respiratory infections, bacterial and viral, 4 million deaths. Diarrhea and diseases related, viral and bacteria, 3 million deaths. This is per year. Tuberculosis, bacterial. Now we have a new viral tuberculosis, do we not? And they don't even mention the viral tuberculosis here, just the bacterial, 3 million. Hepatitis B, virus, 3 million. Protozoa, malaria, 1 million. Measles, viral, 880,000. Tetanus, 600,000. AIDS, viral, 550,000. They don't even talk about cancer and heart disease there. We're just talking about diseases here related to virus and bacteria. And yet they don't even list the new tuberculosis virus or the new hunter virus is not listed there. The flesh-eating virus, the streptococci A, the Ebola virus. You know, I mean, there's so much going on that we're not even aware of what's happening. I think many of us also have a tendency to want to ignore it. We don't want to deal with the truth. Why? We don't know what to do about it. True or false? Okay, look at here. Where will the next deadly virus appear? And then it goes on to talk about, you know, the agents, smallpox, AIDS, hepatitis B. How many of you are familiar with the Ebola virus and the symptomology of it? Are you aware that that Ebola virus causes decomposing of the internal organs and the smooth muscle tissue inside the human body? And once a victim contracts the Ebola virus, three to five days and they're dead. And you know what happened in Wilming, Minnesota just last week, where eight people died from what they're calling the new streptococci virus, 
that caused people to die within three to five days. Their tissue, internal organs degenerated. It was the Ebola virus, but they're saying it's a new streptococci A. An epidemic. This is interesting. The price of doing nothing will be millions of lives. And it's happened before. Look at here. Killer flu, 1918 to 19. Killed 20 million people. So we're not dealing with something that's just popped into our world today. There's been viruses around since the beginning of time. Look at what happened during Moses' time. Look at the 16th century plague in England and Europe that claimed millions of lives. Why is it happening? Why do we have more of it today? Because we have a weaker immune system. How are we going to build it? How many are familiar with this article out of the Weekly World News, November 8th issue? Cancer flu spreads to U.S. The virus acts like an ordinary flu bug at first, but as the symptoms linger, the virus mutates, causing cancer of the bone, blood, brain, colon, and pancreas. Interesting, isn't it? And, of course, if you happen to be a victim, cancer flu has reached the United States, much less stricken victims in Dallas, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, and New York. What are we going to do about these things? Look at this article here in March issue of Reader's Digest. The invisible invaders. The question is no longer when will infectious diseases be wiped out. Rather, it is where will the next deadly new plague appear? You need to read it because this article talks about how that every antibiotic that they have made, the viruses mutate, the bacteria mutate, and create their own immunity against the antibiotics. So we need to read these things so we are aware of what's going on and be prepared. Let's look at some of the things that cause it. Water suspected in illness. U.S. health officials speculate that local water sickened dozens of AIDS patients during the spring. Groups warn of risk from bad drinking water. New TB, a time bomb. This is USA Today News cover story. You know, we need to be aware. Flu on tap. Milwaukee blames illness on tap water. Tainted water. Blame for unlike illnesses. It just goes on and on wherever we look. A contagious fascination with infections. As lethal viruses make news, the public ponders, what if the hot zone? How many of you have seen the movie, The Outbreak? Well, that's a reality. That's not just a movie. That's a reality. Ancient ills return with a vengeance. Viruses that they can't kill, they can't control. Now I want to spend time showing you what's exciting. This comes right out of the Cairo University Research Department, Dr. Rodwin S. Farag, who is our colleague in research at Cairo and I've worked with for three years. Safety evaluation of thyme and clove essential oils as natural antioxidants. If we're going to fight something, let's fight it with what God gave us to fight with. Look at here. Antimicrobial activity of some Egyptian spice essential oils. Hard copy research. We're not just here to talk about folklore medicine. Antimicrobial action of essential oils. The antimicrobial action is probably the one property of essential oils that has been known for the longest time. Isn't that interesting? But do you know about it? Do you read about it? Do you get to hear about it in the U.S. of A.? Of course not. How many of you know somebody that has diabetes? Let me show you what's going on at Cairo University with diabetes. They cure it. Look at here. This is just one of the simple studies that was conducted on diabetes. Blood glucose levels. This was control group with insulin right here. Then they used bitter fennel and it dropped it from over 275 to 200. Common dill oil below 200. Coriander brought it down to normal range. Simple essential oils. Yes, they're correcting diseases in many places in the world. Look at here what came off the Associated Press two months ago. Very interesting. Scientists examine the role of food derivatives in preventing cancer. Is anyone interested in cancer prevention? Cancer regression? Well, look at here. Soybeans, lavender oil, and orange peel. And we jump over here. Cancer-fighting powers of plant oils. Small quantities in lavender oil have been shown to work against breast cancer in lab animals. In animal studies, he said, we got both the prevention of cancer and the regression of cancer. How many would sooner have chemotherapy than a bottle of lavender oil? Now, this is something that's very exciting. We need oxygenation, antioxidants, and increased frequency. What's a frequency? Is frequency important to us? Are our bodies electrical? Absolutely. And it's very interesting when we study that and we see that not only is our body electrical, but everything around us has electrical frequency. But there's different types of frequencies, and this is what is kind of interesting. Because your lights overhead up here, they also have a frequency called 60 hertz. Essential oils have frequency from 52 to 320 hertz. But the difference between the oil frequency and your light frequency or television or telephone or microwave, your electrical 
AC frequencies are incoherent chaotic frequencies. They fracture the human electrical field, where essential oils have a coherent harmonic frequency. And so they're harmonious with the electrical field of the human body. So essential oils give us oxygen, antioxidants, and frequency. Now I make food supplementation and was the first to create this type of formulation, the first to develop it in the world, and that was using essential oils in the food supplements. Why? Because we found essential oils work as a transport mechanism in the food supplements. And the reason that we're starving to death nutritionally is because we're not assimilating the nutrients on the cellular level. Essential oils have the ability, because they are soluble with the lipids in the membrane, to go through the cellular wall and to carry with it nutrients that they're in association with. Because that's their purpose in the plant life, is to transport nutrients through the cell wall and deliver it inside the plant. And so when we took essential oils and put it inside the plant, it was very exciting because we got a delivery system. Now I want to back up just a little bit and give you something to think about. Going back to the blood, the blood is the transporter of nutrients. Vitamins, minerals, proteins, amino acids, hormones, enzymes. That's the pathway that they travel in to go to the cells. Then the cell wall has to be receptive to those nutrients and those health food ingredients. But when we have a deficiency in oxygen, the cell membrane literally will start to thicken because the pH changes on. And when it thickens, then the oxygen that's present there, also being compromised because of lifestyles, is not able to get the nutrients through the wall. And so we wind up with nutrients in the blood serum, but we can't get it inside the cell. And so we wind up having cell mutation, creating a host for viruses and bacteria and germs. Now, if essential oils are responsible for the oxygenating molecules, they are antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, and immunostimulating, which I'm going to show you in a minute, hard copy from the medical research. And they have the ability to transport nutrients that they are the life force of the plant, what do you suppose happens to that oil when we cut the plant and dehydrate it? We evaporate 98% of that live substance that is responsible for the healing force of that plant. As I look through the audience, I see quite a few people here that are probably old enough to remember the days when they used to gather herbs fresh in the pasture or the field or out on the hill and come home and make up their poultices and their teas and their extracts, and it worked. And so you tell your children about it, and your children get sick, and they go down to the health food store and buy a bottle of that same herb in a capsule form, take it home and take six bottles of it, and nothing happens. And we wonder why. It is because modern man has taken the life force out of the herbs by dehydration. And so when I discovered that or learned about that, that's when I started spraying the oils back into the powdered herb and it brought back the bioavailability of the nutrients that weren't there before or available to us before because the catalyst agent had been evaporated out of them. So we were the first to put essential oils back into the plant and reestablish that activity. So if we want to cleanse our body, we want regeneration and we want immunity, then we've got to start working on self, inside out and outside in. And it's really beautiful because we can create that simply by putting oils on the body. Now, look at lemon oil. Lemon oil is pressed from the rind or the peeling. Now, this is taken right out of my French medical encyclopedia. This is hard copy research. This is not my work. And, of course, you can see that it's in French, Latin. And so what we're looking at here where it says active principles, these are the constituents or the chemical ingredients found inside of that lemon oil that are identifiable. Many have not been identified yet. And we look right here. There's one agent here, sesquiterpenes, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it as I go along. Sesquiterpenes. The reason that's important is because they just found in 1994 at the Medical University of Berlin, Germany and Vienna, Austria that sesquiterpenes go beyond the blood-brain barrier. Now, I don't know how important that is to anyone, but I'll just kind of fill you in a little bit. It was stated by the Medical Association in October 1993 that if we, quote, could find an agent that would go beyond the blood-brain barrier, we could treat MS, Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's, and Alzheimer's successfully. June 1994, 
it was documented that the agent of sesquiterpenes has the ability to go beyond the blood-brain barrier and was discovered in high levels in frankincense and sandalwood oils. I attended a three-day medical conference in Grasse, France, September 5th, 6th, and 7th of 1994. I saw this research presented and I saw the brain scan slices of before and after the inhalation of frankincense and sandalwood and how it increased the oxygen production in the limbic system, particularly around the pineal and pituitary gland, and increased the secretion of antibodies endorphins and neurotransmitters documented hard copy from Berlin and Vienna Austria let's look at lemon oil anti-infectious bacterial streptococci antiseptic bacterial antiviral this is how the doctors prescribe lemon oil to be used in the hospitals in Europe. There are 150 hospitals in England alone now prescribing and using essential oils for treatment. In respiratory infections, liver insufficiency in children, digestive insufficiencies, insomnia, phlebitis, thrombosis, and they use it as a disinfectant in the air and the cabinetry and medical cabinets and in hospitals throughout Europe. And what do we use in America to disinfect with? Drugs. This is another beautiful oil. Now, I showed you from the Associated Press about lavender, did I not? Look at this one here. This is lavender again. And look at the profile that we see, and there's sesquiterpones. Now, not only are sesquiterpones and terpones able to go beyond the blood-brain barrier, but they also have been found, along with phenols and cenols, to contain the highest level of oxygenating molecules of all of the constituents in the oil. And let's look at what they say lavender will do. This is out of Paris, France, incidentally. And we have antispasmodic, decongestant, muscle decontraction, hypotensive, anti-inflammatory, anti-infectious, staph, cardiotonic, anticoagulant of fluids, and of course they prescribe it for the spasms of the solar plexus, insomnia, dermatosis, infections, allergies. How many of you have taken allergy shots in your life? I mean, isn't that bizarre to know that lavender is used for allergies? In fact, what was discovered two years ago was you take lavender oil, and incidentally, it has to be pure lavender oil. This doesn't mean you can just run down to the health food store and buy any old lavender oil that's sold on the market. Because see, in America, people don't understand essential oils. But what they do understand is they understand marketing. And they know how to buy the garbage that's rejected from France and bring it to the United States and cut it with propylene glycol and synthetic constituents like synthetic linalol acetate and put it in the bottle and sell it as essential oil of lavender. And if you don't know the difference, you're just a victim. And so if you go down to a health food store and you see a half ounce of lavender oil on the shelf for five to eight dollars a half ounce, you know that you're getting garbage because pure lavender oil, you can't buy it in France for that price. So those are things that are very important. And just to give you an understanding, there are four hybrids of lavenders, but they're called lavendins. They're not therapeutic for aromatherapy use, but that's what's sold in the United States predominantly because people here don't know the difference. Our lavender that we produce in France, because we have our own farm in France, we have our own farm in Idaho, we do our own growing in order to produce the top quality. You have to distill this plant, and that's how the oil is extracted, through steam distillation. It has to be at low pressure, low temperature, and lavender has to be in the chamber for a minimum of one and a half hours, and better two hours. But the commercial distilling in Europe for the perfume industry, they distill lavender oil in 15 minutes, at 400 degrees and up to 150 pounds of pressure. And they pump chemicals into the water while they're doing it. So these are things that are very important for you to know that it's not a matter of just running out to a health food store and buying oils because the people who are marketing oils predominantly are in it for the money. They don't care about the purity and they haven't taken the time to study. I've spent 11 years in Europe, Israel, and Egypt studying the history, working in the universities. My studies have been in the Medical University of Geneva, Switzerland. I started in 1984. 
the University of Paris. I have worked in two hospitals in Paris. I've studied the Warwick University, the London University, the University of Cairo, where I've spent three years working and studying and traveling, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And so it's been an incredible study. I spent five years off and on in southern France learning the ancient art of distillation so we could maintain that purity. Now let me share with you some of the things that just came out of the Warwick University that I brought back last year on lavender oil. And this is really exciting. Lavender, a native of the Mediterranean region in France, is a major producer. A fragrance component in pharmaceuticals, antiseptic ointments, creams, lotions, cosmetics, including soaps, detergents, creams, lotions, and perfumes, lavender waters, and colognes. However, lavender now is starting to be widely used in aromatherapy for the treatment of burns scalds, inflammation, wounds, ulcers, eczema, dermatitis, fainting, headaches, migraines, influenza, insomnia, hysteria, tension, infection, asthma, rheumatism, and arthritis. Now, when you can get a bottle of lavender oil for $15, who would want to have aspirin? And this is interesting. This is just the constituents that are responsible for all of that activity in lavender oil. And this is just a small portion. It's interesting to see when we look at the linalol acetate level right here, we're at a 441. And that's a relatively good quality oil. The lavender oil we're producing on the farm in Idaho has a linalol acetate of 67, the highest produced in the world. Look at here, toxicity. Subcutaneous injection in mice showed low toxicity. No human phototoxicity reported. So it's totally safe, and that's the beautiful part of essential oils, is you don't have to be concerned about having side effects from pure oils. Cut, adulterated, synthetic, absolutely, but not pure, not the way God intended it to be. Why is it valuable? How do we get oils quickly into the system? Through the olfactory nerve to the pineal pituitary, the amygdala, when you breathe an oil into the system and through the nasal cavity, it is first picked up by the neurons that hang down here from the olfactory, right between the eyes and the top of the sinus cavity. Those oil molecules are carried within milliseconds into the center of the brain. And now they have found and discovered that through the inhalation of essential oils into the midbrain system that they will cause a secretion of antibodies instantly, endorphins and neurotransmitters. Now we're seeing a direct response on the immune system from the inhalation and topical application of essential oils like none other that has ever been created. So diffusing, this puts the oils into the atmosphere in your home. You're getting increased oxygen because it releases the oxygenating molecules. You're getting increased ozone and negative ions because that's where it comes from in nature, from the plant oils. You're getting the antiviral, bacterial, fungal, germicidal properties and the immunostimulating and you're inhaling this. Oils, in fact, I just got a copy, hard copy in on the internet just last week from Ulster University in Northern Ireland where they did a study of diffusing, vaporizing essential oils into an atmosphere with 210 colonies of bacteria and it killed all 210. So it makes the most perfect air purification system that has ever been invented or rediscovered. And we can't afford to be without it. How do we know these things happen and how do they work? By simply studying the properties in the oil. This is time vulgaris. This is a chromatogram. Everybody knows what camphor is, right? It's soothing. It's penetrating the tissue. Camphor is synthetically made from the active ingredient called camphene. So when we look at this oil, which is thyme oil, we know that it's going to have a very powerful effect in penetrating. We look at the pinenes. They're germicidal. We look at the senols right here, they're antibacterial and viral. We look at the terpenines, they're antiviral in action. So when we take an essential oil in the laboratory and analyze it, we know instantly the value it has. And depending on the percentage of activity will tell us whether it's a pure oil or whether there's been something done with it. So the science is incredible. This is clary sage that we grew at our farm this past summer in Idaho. The highest linalol activity of any clary sage is still 72. Most clary sage ranges around 57. Down here you have sclerol and transoxide to sclerol. 
That is what converts to estriol in the human body that produces natural estrogen. So how many of you ladies are taking some synthetic hormone? You got it right here in your plants. When God created this world, He created everything naturally for us. And He gave us every substance that we will ever need to protect our bodies from all the things that we have to deal with. Just like He gave to the Israelites, you can read about it in Exodus chapter 30, verses 21 through 27. And read about the formula, the oil formula that the Lord gave Moses. Moses. We're talking about a substance that was the beginning of time with a biblical foundation, and man has ignored it. It has been lost and forgotten, and not till 1921 did it start to come back into our time from an old gentleman, Dr. Maurice René Gatfasse, who was a French cosmetic chemist working in his lab one day and had an explosion and had a third degree thermal burn on his hand, wrist, and forearm. Knowing that he needed to reduce the temperature, he reached over where one of his colleagues had just set a container with liquid in it, thought it was water, plunged his hand into it, and it was lavender oil. And it healed his burn without a trace of a scar. And that man was so excited, and being a chemist, he took the lavender apart to understand and find out how it healed this burn without a scar. And from there, he gave the research to Dr. Jean Valnet, who was a medical doctor in Paris, France. Valnet did nothing with it until the post-war years of World War II, when he was working with war victims from shrapnel wounds and losing them to gangrene because of the antibiotics wouldn't work. And Dr. Gatfasse sent him some oils and said, try the oils. And he started using the oils, and he saved every single patient. And that was the restoration of aromatherapy, as it's called today, 1946. That's how new it is. But yet the studies never really started until 1967. It is the most exciting thing that we have. Now this is just a little bit about essential oils. Frequency. We were the first to discover essential oils literally contain electrical frequency. We did a study of over 200 subjects at the Eastern State University in Cheney, Washington, we found that the average body frequency ranges 62 to 68. The brain frequencies are 10 hertz higher during the day, and then it reverses during the night, and the brain frequencies are 10 hertz lower. Body frequencies are 10 hertz higher. We found that two subjects, we took two young men who had a 66 hertz frequency. One held the coffee, his frequency dropped to 58 in three seconds. The other one drank it, his frequency dropped to 52 in three seconds. The young man that drank the coffee, we didn't let him have any oils. It took three days for it to go back up. The young man that just held the coffee, we let him breathe the essential oils, and his frequency went up in 21 seconds. We found that disease begins at 58 hertz frequency. Flu starts at 57, candida at 55, Epstein-Barr at 52, and cancer at 42. What this tells us that when we do things in our lives that compromise our frequency in the human body, we can become a victim. Essential oils reestablish the normal frequency of the human cells documented at Eastern State University. Another thing that's really exciting is regeneration. How can you regenerate something if you can't stimulate circulation and activity? The top leading neurologist in the United States helped me to discover oils were electrical. How? Because we discovered that hearing could be restored with the oil of helichrysum not only from loss of hearing, but from deafness, born deafness. Three people now have total restoration. And I went to him to ask how. He said, because the oils are electrical, they stimulate the firing in the axon. They increase the neurotransmitter that converts in the axon to an electron. It fires across the synaptic gap right here. He said, in a birth defect, nerves didn't connect. And he said, the oils will literally increase the firing of that synopsis, and it will jump across the gap and connect to that nerve that did not connect. And once it starts firing, it will start growing together until it hardwires. So essential oils have the ability to stimulate the regeneration of damaged nerve tissue. Helichrysum. How do we use oils? Diffusing in the air through the feet. Many of you here are probably reflexologists or certainly work with the feet. Start working with oils through the feet. How many of you have experienced pain and suffered with pain for days and days and days and couldn't get rid of it? And you've taken pain medication and Tylenol and morphine and whatever to kill pain. How would you feel if you knew that you broke a bone and you could take a single oil and rub it on that broken spot and stop the pain within three to six seconds? You can do it with essential oils. 
There's a formula. It has a, two oils in it that are responsible greatly for that. One is helichrysum, and the other one is birch. Birch oil, like spruce oil, contains methyl cisalate. It works like cortisone on the tissue, and it's a topical anesthesia. Helichrysum is a topical anesthesia. It's beautiful. Another way to work with oils is through the ears, auricular. We found that dealing with emotions, how many people here have emotions? Is there anyone that has no emotional problems at all? Do you know that the ancient Egyptians used oils to do what they call cleansing of the flesh and the blood? Removing the evil deities from the mind. Because they believed if they didn't remove the evil deities from the mind, which we call negative emotions, that they couldn't come back into the body they left in the tomb. I was allowed March last year, one year ago, to go into a secret chamber where this ritual was performed. And I was allowed to photograph the walls. And we started translating the hieroglyphics that told about this ritual. It was a three-day ritual, and they used oils to take the people through it and totally eradicate the negative memory and memory trauma from the people. I started teaching and working with people with oils for eradicating emotional trauma. It is life-changing. And working through the ears, in fact, we have a little oil blend, and if you ever feel depressed or manic depressant or suicidal, a couple of drops and just rub it right there, and it'll take it away in just a matter of seconds. Another beautiful area to work through is through the spine and just massaging the oils up and down the spine, getting into those nerve meridians to get into those organs and glands in the body is absolutely incredible. We had a little gal in Denver, Colorado yesterday. I had a seminar there, and we had over 150 people in the seminar. She had a great big large knot on her spine. We just rubbed simple oils of spruce and birch and frankincense on it, and it dissolved half in 20 minutes. And 150 people gathered around and watched. Okay, let's show you what's going on in the antiviral activity. We have a little kit, and it has the lavender, peppermint, and lemon oils in it, plus four blends, because I formulate blends. I made another one to kill airborne bacteria in the home, odors, mold, fungus. It's incredible. And then in that packet is also one. This has rose oil in it, the highest of the frequencies, 320 hertz. It has ylang-ylang in it, which balances the male and female energies. It also is a powerful support to the heart for tachycardia and arrhythmia. Because of these new viruses and our immune system weakening, I knew that we had to have something to help support that system. So I went to work studying and I put this formula together and these oils that I'm going to present now are in that formula. This is Robinsara aromatica. It's a plant that's a combination of clove and nutmeg and it grows in Madagascar. And of course you see the sesquiterpenes. Sesquiterpenes stimulate the immune system. Look at here, anti-infectious, antiviral, antibacterial, and it's indicated for renopharyngitis, gripe, cyanitis, bronchitis, viral hepatitis, viruses of the intestinal, and cholera, herpes, one and two, infectious mononucleosis, insomnia, muscular fatigue. Here's another one. This one you ladies probably have in your kitchen called oregano. You know, you need to quit cooking with it and start juicing it and snorting it. Okay? <laughs> Look at here, phenols, the number one constituent that's responsible for the oxygenating activity of oils. Anti-infectious, large spectrum of action against bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites. Immunostimulant. This one you'll like, frankincense, is talked about in the Bible, the holy anointing oil. It's mentioned 52 times in the Bible. Okay, sesquiterpenes again, goes beyond the blood-brain barrier. Look at here, anti-catarrhal, expectorant, anti-tumoral, immunostimulant, antidepressive, bronchitis, catarrh, asthma, ulcers, cancer immunodeficiencies and nervous depression. I got involved with a doctor in Scottsdale, Arizona, Dr. Terry Friedman, medical doctor. I asked him if he would like to do some research and work with the oils and see what he could create, and he said, I would love to. As of this day, one year from the time we started, he now has nine cancer patients out of nine in remission from prostate and lymphoma and Hodgkin's. That's documented, by the way. <laughs> Hyssop oil, the oil that Moses used. Look at here. anti guttural mucolytic, decongestion, anti-inflammatory of the pulmonary, regulator of the metabolism and lipids, anti-infectious, large spectrum, staphylococci, pneumonia, parasites, prescribed for renopharyngitis, sinitis, bronchitis, pneumonia, cystitis, post-infections, sclerosis, plaque, ovarian problems. It just goes on and on and on. Mountain savory. 
Look at here. Anti-infectious major activity is an antibacterial agent, antifungal, antiviral, antiparasitic, immunostimulating. And here they use it for candida, cystitis, prostitis, and right on down through arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. That was mountain savory. This is cystus oil, commonly called rock rose. Beautiful oil. Same thing, there we see the phenols again. Anti-infectious, antiviral, bacterial. Regulator of neurovegetative degeneration of the nervous system. Autoimmune. So used also for arthritis and rheumatism and plaque and other things. But primarily for viruses of the autoimmune system. What is AIDS? Okay, we had a beautiful situation in Pottstown, Pennsylvania just a couple of weeks ago. A nurse at one of the seminars, she says, Dr. Young, could I share a story with you? And I said, yes. She says, one of the doctors that I work for has a patient that has lupus. She'd had it for a number of years, and as she's getting older, the lupus has just been progressively getting worse and worse and worse. And she was in the hospital for a test and change of medication, and she said my doctor told her that there was nothing that could be done and just to get her fares in order. She said, I felt so bad that when she started to leave, I just walked her out, and I gave her my bottle of essential oils, and I said, why don't you take this home and just rub it on and just see if it'll make you feel a little better and help you a little bit. She said some of the oils here have been found to help support the immune system. The lady took it home. Three days later, she called the nurse back. She says, what did you give me? And she says, why? She says, I'm feeling better. She says, my strength is coming up. My energy level is coming up. Five days after that, which was a total of eight days, she returned to the doctor for a checkup. He could not find one symptom, not one trace of lupus. God knew that we were going to have these diseases. He knew what we were going to deal with. And do you think he put us down here to be victims? Absolutely not. He gave us everything that we need to take care of the human body. This is clove oil, by the way. And look at here, anti-infection, bacteria, large spectrum of action against gram-positive and negative, antiviral, fungal, parasitic, antiseptic, and a general stimulant, anti-tumoral, dental infections, viral hepatitis, colitis, cystitis, viruses of the nerves. What is MS? Look at here, cancer, Hodgkin's. That was clove oil, simple clove oil. I mean, it is so incredible to see what can be done and what can be created. So I have made a major focus on creating formulas to support the immune system. It's been really a pleasure to be here and share with you what I call the missing link and what I also find to be the most exciting thing that has been rediscovered in the world, and that's the world of essential oils and how we can use them in our food products, in our food supplements, and create a beautiful opportunity to build the immune system and not become a victim. Let's be thankful for what we have. Let's always have thanks in our heart for all that we have, and let's live with that and keep that smile on our face and joy in our heart, and let's share with the world the blessings that God gave us a long time ago. Thank you for coming and participating. Thank you for taking time to listen to this exciting information. We hope it inspires you to ask questions about the gifts that God has given us for man's healing and well-being since the beginning of time. Please contact the person who shared this tape with you and learn how essential oils can make a difference in your life. We hope you will join us in taking this life-changing message to the world. This information is for educational purposes only and not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease.